Hello and welcome to Design Timber. My name is Tabitha Binding and I'm Head of Education and Engagement for Timber Development UK. This is a new series from Timber Development UK where we are creating the opportunity to learn directly from the architects and the multidisciplinary teams behind four incredible projects. And these projects have been selected from the Wood Awards 2021. So as people come into the room, I'd like to tell you a little bit more about Timber Development UK. Timber Development UK has been formed from the merger of the Timber Trade Federation and TRADA. And this is an ongoing and exciting project, which we hope to fully realise by the end of the summer. By bringing these two associations together as one, we are creating the largest, most comprehensive supply chain body in the UK, spanning from sawmill to specifier to finished project and all points in between. Our mission is for timber to be accepted as the first choice for any suitable construction project in the UK and as the best route to decarbonise the built environment. To do this, we will act as an agent of change towards more sustainable, low carbon forms of construction. At the centre of our mission are three main interlinking goals. We're setting out to connect the supply chain through this merger, lead best practice by building the largest, most comprehensive online library of technical specification and design guidance, and accelerate a low future, a low carbon future, as we support the timber supply chain to lead as a net zero industry. Events like today are crucial to these goals and our mission. So today, in the third of the Design Timber series, we all hear from the team behind the Wooden Annex, which was highly commended in the Small Projects category at the 2021 Wood Awards. So in the first half of today's session, you'll hear from our speakers as they go into detail on the concept, on concept and process. We'll then move on to a panel discussion and the Q&A. So if you have any questions, please put them in the Q&A. We think that the, the chat function has been disabled, but you're never sure with these online things. Um, without further ado, I'd like to welcome our speakers. So our architect is Taro Suruta from Suruta Architects, Kirsten Weiser, sorry, Kirsten Weiser from Structure Labs, and Patrick Naptic from JK London Construction. And with that, would you unmute Taro? I'd stop sharing yep. and it's over to you. Okay, uh, so. so yeah. Uh, yeah, is that okay? That's absolutely perfect. Right. Uh, yeah, thanks for joining, uh, uh, tuning in this uh, webinar uh, for your busy lunch time. And then uh, thank you very much uh, to Chimba Development UK uh, inviting us to present our project. Uh, our project, I'm going to talk about this wooden extension, uh, but also I'm going to, my talk going to be more also to do with the, uh, how we deliver. We have a slightly unconventional way to deliver uh, our project. Uh, so my talk would be very technical and also more execution uh, at the site oriented. So uh, this is a site, uh, end of the terrace site, which is dotted around in red. Is actually uh, quite a large in comparison to other uh, uh, rest of Terrace House. Client purchased this land in the view of uh, extending uh, uh, their house uh, right from the beginning. Uh, south facing, and then uh, uh, there are a few mature trees, particularly two large oak trees. Uh, these developments are done by Dalage Estate and then an uh, architect called Ochim Bellon. Uh, he was a Dalage uh, asset architect as well as Abea. So in a post uh, style, sort of housing style. And there are many of them uh, by uh, Austin uh, project uh, in Dalage estate. Uh, so this is the existing house and uh, my clients. Uh, as you can see, there are many sort of uh, material. We have a white render, brick, and then a uh, Grey tile, uh, concrete, concrete tile, roof tile, timber, cladding, uh, you know, etc. So quite difficult to match. Uh, so right from the beginning, was the right thing to match to this house or uh, something else? So, so we had a kind of mind in our mind that maybe this is 
could be more sort of garden oriented rather than sort of trying to match to the existing house. So, however, originally we actually designed uh, brick and block sort of a conventional extension. And we uh, applied to uh, planning uh, permission and SADAP gave us a, a permission. However, this is in the Dalaji estate and Dalaji estate also had the own planning system that we had to apply. And when we applied to Dalaji estate planning application, uh, nine, eight of nine neighbor along this long boundary wall, uh, they objected to our proposal. So Dalaji estate came back saying that uh, you have to mitigate the neighbor's concern. So, you know, their concern was that uh, uh, natural habitat along the boundary, which is basically kind of overgrown bushes, a bit of mosquitoes. And then uh, oak tree, uh, which is uh, in actually my client's garden, uh, but anyway, they uh, enjoy these uh, natural habitats. So what we done was that uh, we made a slightly smaller uh, footprint of uh, extension, and then uh, we made sure, original, and from the beginning, we never, uh, Intruded into the root protection zone, but it's, uh, uh, we you know uh, propose or agree to propose that uh, we're going to use the screw piles, and then uh, uh, also we made a timber extension rather than a brick extension, and then client uh, neighbors are happy, and then uh, they uh, retracted their objection. So we how we design is the uh, uh, client has a. Uh, which uh, the main thing was that uh, they wanted to have dining and living in front of the kitchen. So therefore, when they are cooking, they can uh, speak to people in a both dining kitchen. So it was a bit difficult to do it with this given uh, site profile, uh, rather narrow uh, than uh, wide. So what we did was sort of this L shape uh, arrangement that are uh, kitchen corner and a living room and then a, a dining room. Uh, pushed further uh, from building line into the garden. So this dining room becomes sort of a primary important space, like as if eating inside of the garden. This was sort of a starting point. And so we didn't want to have sort of a, a, any particular direction in this dining room. Uh, so the primary sort of, you know, elevation or primary orientation. It's kind of like a space, like a dot. Uh, so this is a, a 4.5 tatami module, uh, sort of a, a, so like four sheet and a half module in, in the middle. So this sort of a, a module, 4.5 tatami module is often used uh, for Japanese tea ceremony room in, in, in Japanese garden. So kind of we took it from there sort of, uh, and use this sort of non kind of direction and sort of a, a layout or format uh, as a basis. And then uh, this gave us a sort of a window door, window door arrangement. And then we made elevation, window and door, window door. So we didn't put any sort of a, a hierarchy in uh, which side is most important than the other. So all the spaces are, are important for the dining room. And then uh, uh, from there, so that we developed uh, structural grid uh, for the ceiling, uh, and then uh, that's extended. And then a uh, uh, sort of surface meet the other surfaces to create a uh, building volumes. This is a bit of an inspired by Mizian sort of a way of uh, forming a uh, building volume. And then this is a, a final plan. Uh, we kind of put uh, dining in the garden and then a large uh, kitchen island uh, in a sort of 90 degree. So uh, wood, uh, so the material I'm going to talk about is uh, we use primarily use uh, wood for the aquaria, and also with a lot of plywood. Uh, so aquaria, uh, this is not our project, uh, project in Netherlands. Uh, it's called the modest bridge that are, are some time of year, uh, bridge goes in the water and then another time goes out of the water. So this is not uh, uh, great for wood uh, if you would want to be uh, maintained for longer duration, but it's a, uh, uh, surprisingly, or an incredibly, Aquaia kind of managed to, to have this uh, project that are after 11 years, uh, a company took this piece of wood and sent it in love, and they didn't see any decay or a rot 
uh, and the dimension wise, it was apparently was very, very, very uh, strong. So that you know, being ten and water in this condition, it was like almost as if you know, when it's installed, although surface uh, weathered, but it's uh, in terms of durability, it, you know, didn't have any any uh, difference from the beginning. Uh, and we use the same material. Uh, this is a material uh, we use the Expose Aquaria for other projects, and we won. I think yeah, 2020 uh, with ours and the small project category. So we kind of become familiar, uh, familiarizing, familiar with this uh, uh, special wood. Other thing I would like to talk about is the digital fabrication uh, in construction, which has been sort of more rapidly developed. Uh, and this is again not our project, uh, done its project by ICD, uh, Institute of Computational design and construction in uh, University of Stuttgart. Their projects are amazing. They uh, do uh, complex geometry and they do you know, material research. And then uh, sort of, you know, there's candidates, uh, there's PhD candidate actually, this excuse is an uh, incredible project and other people do this like ETH. You know, they are like a sort of a, a all done with state of art robotic arm within a lab environment. So compared to, and I call these guys like Premier League of uh, digital fabrication. And in comparison to uh, these guys, you know, we're kind of a division six, league six of uh, digital fabrication. But however, kind of, uh, you know, we are applying this, you know, simple computation to a very domestic scale, small project in the UK. I mean, but it's division six is not that bad position. Uh, considering that uh, 36% of the uh, uh, UK uh, construction outputs uh, are private housing sector, including a repair and, and, and uh, extension, those small ones, and out of number uh, to any other uh, one, which is you know, infrastructure, second biggest, but it's you know, you know, almost twice. Uh, so uh, whatever we do, small changes in this large housing section, uh, the construction industry could have uh, uh, could be as impactful as the as the you know premier leader of data uh, publication. So uh, this is our robotic arm. Uh, it's uh, Yarek uh, is uh, one of the most favorite site former among my client with uh, three jobs and you know, together with Patrick. You know he's uh, already with a difficult architect between difficult architect and sometimes a difficult client and he's. Uh, highly emotionally intelligent person that who can handle and make us happy. So we are working with human uh, with a uh, sort of uh, small uh, input of computation. And then uh, uh, this is uh, not lab, this is our site. Uh, all the pieces there are the pieces that are, are converted from 3D file directory and then uh, uh, made it to DWG. And then we send the pieces to a uh, CNC uh, cutting service provider. And in uh, our case, uh, these uh, uh, invoices are sent to uh, our main contractor, Patrick talk about it, and the Patrick press order. So contractually, what we are assisting main contractor and contractually main contractor is uh, basically liable for the pieces. So this is a quite unusual, unique. Uh, Patrick will talk about the uh, advantages of this. Uh, so uh, uh, this is what we do and how we, we really work close together. And this is our file environment. We normally put everything in one file and then all pieces are interlinked. So main model is in, in, in there. And then like, you know, the one on the flat, they are actually uh, sent to a, a in combatable DWG and sent to a CMC uh, cutting service provider. And then uh, uh, those ones that are, are uh, kind of exploded, they are sort of what we use for, uh, we call it assembly drawings. Assembly drawings are that uh, uh, it's almost like, a, you know, when you buy IKEA furniture, you can get in you know, a piece of sheet that are, you know, this is the top, this is the bottom, you know, this is, a, you know, you put iron key here and there. Those are kind of very, very, very simple uh, diagram, which is uh, sufficient uh, to the uh, joiner and then uh, actually carpenter nowadays understand how they put them together. We kind of like uh, uh, start like that. And then I, oh, we get always feedback with us from site. And then uh, uh, we kind of, uh, uh, you know, find the best way to put them together while we're doing. Uh, 
Our building is quite basic. Uh, we have a ground beam and then we have a, a vertical uh, studge. In between, uh, we uh, made something called cassette. Uh, cassette is uh, uh, sort of you know, piece of ship. Uh, it's a uh, bracing as well as a uh, uh, acting as a bracing and as well as a you know, contain uh, insulation and locked with the uh, paper sheet. Uh, and the roof, uh, we call it waffles, waffle roof, private waffle roof, uh, made of a series of uh, uh, private boxes stitched together. Uh, actually, uh, we found out that uh, we could make uh, the same, you know, uh, size of uh, uh, CLT. Uh, uh, slab, uh, we use only one side of wood. So in terms of body weight, uh, we can achieve much, much less uh, noble, uh, material uh, than a uh, uh, conventional CLT slab. And this is a, a, a aqua ring beam, uh, aqua ground beam. Uh, Cassie is going to talk about it in more detail. Uh, we did it uh, with the uh, aluminum screw pile, which is uh, uh, probably only available in the UK. But I've seen a Swiss practice using actually chimba piling uh, for six story uh, project. So it's possible we can even get rid of uh, aluminum uh, a screw piling. So if you think about it, whole Venice is standing on chimba piles. So uh, it's uh, why not for uh, uh, building in, in general. So, uh, so over the uh, uh, chimba, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, chimba ground me, uh, we place a uh, uh, studge. And then uh, those studs are cut with uh, uh, five axis CMC. Uh, and then uh, in between, we slot the, the uh, cassette, uh, which contains uh, insulation. And the other cassette, we use a five stamp plywood, uh, external, it's very you know, uh, economical and then uh, robust. And then uh, uh, they are the ones that are uh, sort of uh, explaining how to put these. Uh, uh, Waffle slab together, uh, casting kind of design all the tiny bits and pieces. And uh, they're connected with a plywood plug. Uh, so when we send our uh, sort of uh, uh, digital uh, information, uh, we always make it in a batch. And uh, for this extension, we made uh, three batches uh, and, and bottom, middle, and top. Uh, so otherwise, it's too much, too much, too much. Uh, uh, pieces on site. So it, it, logistically, it's quite a good. And also uh, normally these uh, uh, CNC current provider, they have a very short lead time, one to two weeks. Normally they can send the pieces on site. So we kind of press order, very, uh, part of press order, uh, very late stage. So when we did this one, uh, at first batch, uh, our uh, medic came back to saying that Taro don't put any tolerances. Originally, we put too many tolerance between those boxes and they always end up eight minutes and he had a struggle to adjust this eight minutes. So please send zero tolerance. So we send a uh, next batch with a zero tolerance all between the component, but that perfectly fit together for this case. So it's quite amazing. Normally we use the 18 mini plywood. Uh, some comes 18, some comes 17 and a half, other comes 18 and a half, which is a uh, uh, sort of, uh, you know, if we put those components together, actually those different variations gonna disappear. So this is quite amazing thing. Which, uh, it's a versatile, but flexible. If it's really hard to uh, put them together, kind of how many it's mallet. So uh, uh, I think this is one uh, reason that she, you know, ICD guys, you know, these uh, you know, premier league guys also use uh, ply with the wood, often primary material. So it is to kind of like a kind of adjust on site. And then these are, you know, those boxes. And then uh, uh, this is a, uh, this dining room. Uh, uh, top members are ply with the beam as well as uh, uh, insulation uh, uh, sort of integrated. In this uh, extension, we, there is no hidden post or hidden beam uh, as well as even hidden, hidden switch steel plate. So there's no metal involved except for screw and a nail and then a capping piece for the uh, ground beam. So the junction, aqua, and then a uh, uh, plywood beam. So when we think about those components, we more think holistically, not only structure, but also uh, how these are uh, 
finish how these were received final code. So uh, as you can see that the roof firing uh, we integrated into structure. So actually roof firing, firing also acting as a part of structure make roof much more stiffer. And then uh, uh, when the carpenter put them together, they are received to, uh, uh, they're ready to receive uh, final uh, plywood decking. And then once decking is formed, already form for it there, gutter is there, and then they're ready to have a, a waterproof. So carpenter finish, then waterproof and roof is down. And then this is a, a external part. So we predominantly use the aquaria. So stud, cladding, window, coping, also uh, ground beam, which is acting on foundation, all same material. Uh, and our uh, supplier actually gave us uh, all off cuts, uh, you know, because aqua is a fairly expensive wood or as, as could be as expensive as uh, oak. So, but uh, these off cuts are very, very useful because we couldn't sink all, you know, tiny components in, a, you know, gaps and everything. So we could use the same, because it's everything same material uh, externally, and then we can feel if you know kind of use those you know off cuts uh, squeeze into these uh, uh, parts between the parts and again and uh, once uh, so the carbon the finish uh, assembly uh, this is ready for decorator to stain that's it so by doing so the way we done we could eliminate uh, many uh, trade uh, if we are doing this with a brick and block we have a uh, uh, you know uh, sort of uh, more people uh, involved with, uh, so like a brickies or a seal fabricator or whatnot. So if you bring more trade uh, on process, uh, there is a possibility of uh, things get delayed, uh, progress get, get, get delayed. But our case kind of, we just kept, you know, we had a Patrick organizer, a carpet, a three carpet, uh, and then, uh, uh, you know, we just kept sending a, a fly with the side and just, just keep going on, you know, until they finish. So, uh, you know, this we had uh, five in you know, a trade involved with uh, finishing the external envelope and the internal uh, joinery uh, and uh, down to finish. So, this is also uh, we could eliminate the risk you know, of uh, uh, delay. And then, other kind of uh, things we found advantageous. Our, our part is that this is a render uh, design, uh, render image of staircase. We produced uh, two months in construction started. Uh, there was the original staircase standard, uh, but we weren't really sure the design and the client weren't really sure, but we didn't talk about it. But we came up with this design much later stage. And then uh, we presented to clients, client happy, and then uh, we knew that the money allocated for the staircase had been processed. So kind of, you know, we sort of uh, made this uh, CNC and used some uh, original costs uh, for the staircase and then the other bits kind of the stringers, you know, two small wood pieces, we could squeeze into the uh, parts uh, of uh, uh, main extension uh, because it's uh, normally the CNC uh, uh, service, you know, you know, cutting service guys, they kind of cost by, you know, sheet by sheet. So uh, kind of squeezing few pieces doesn't really increase cost. And then a client had to pay this, you know, uh, fire rate glass, that was a bit of an addition. But even though they were quite happy and it wasn't that significant addition. So this is kind of give us a flexibility when and then now uh, 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 you know, when, when we kind of uh, change our mind. So it's give us a bit of a more op autonomy during the design stages. And then again, you know, we didn't like, a, we, did, we couldn't find the light fitting. So kind of we came up with design and we squeezed some features into this sheet of uh, plywood for the other parts. And then we made a, uh, Lighting and this is one of those things that are, are any architect, not any, but it's the architect tend to sort of feel satisfactory when everything aligned and then we kind of aligned uh, roof structure, you know, uh, grid into those of a uh, joinery in you know, a kitchen joinery. So this is also again uh, we can kind of do sort of uh, more spontaneously during this, you know, when we're developing that, you know, you know, component as well. So I'm going to a little bit delay my talk. And this is a photo I found on the internet that Miss Van der Rohe standing in front of Van der Rohe's house, a famous Van der Rohe's house. So uh, Miss Van der Rohe is the architect of this famous house. But at the same time, he was actually contractor of this house. So he took job as a contractor as well. 
So uh, unfortunately, uh, this cost uh, spiraled up. I think it became three times. Client decided not to pay. And then uh, uh, he sued the client and he got the money back. But uh, the relationship wasn't great. But as, nonetheless, this is uh, one of the most uh, important uh, pieces of modern architecture history. Uh, so he had a kind of a, a design autonomy and a control down to nuts and bolts. So it's not unusual uh, designer step into uh, production fabrication. And then, uh, you know, I don't know, Richard Notera, he's also kind of acting as a designer, contractor. So it's kind of like a, a unique part that uh, you can really see through uh, product uh, in a different quality. So our uh, extension, come back to this one, uh, uh, connected to the uh, Grace Corridor and this uh, view. And then this is a dining area, uh, three sides, same elevation. And then an uh, elevation from outside and another elevation. And then uh, this is a, a view to the kitchen from uh, a living room. Uh, as you can see, you know, we squeeze in this uh, you know, uh, kitchen extract uh, within a structure. And then we use all the uh, recess to the uh, running the cable. So we can, and also this is a uh, four, I think four meter uh, opening we made out of a bespoke ply with a sort of a fridge beam, you know, casting design. So there is no steel involvement. And then this is the view to uh, living room, and then a view to dining and a kitchen. And then this is a staircase, uh, pretty much same to uh, uh, the uh, render image uh, because we, when we did the render, we kind of know what the parts uh, we're gonna design in case. And then uh, this is a study room and a view to the study room from outside. And we made a kind of a corner window so you can get more greenery to the space. And this is other view, client cat. And then uh, we uh, so we use our uh, old component parts engraved, the grand happy to do that, engraved into the kitchen alcove of a uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, wall. And then uh, uh, kind of we comment like this effort. So we did a calculation uh, as if we were doing with a conventional brick block steel. And then uh, as you can see, uh, actually we didn't show the cladding, but it's uh, included cladding. We done uh, about 70% less noble carbon, uh, uh, embodied carbon in comparison to a brick and block. Uh, most of the things actually taken by uh, the concrete footing. And we're done with the aqua ground beam, which is significantly reduced uh, amount of uh, embodied carbon. But on top of it, just the weight, actually 11 times less than the uh, conventional weight. Which means if you think about, okay, uh, uh, concrete footing, we need water. So, okay, that made a lot of weight. But if, uh, even though transporting uh, uh, incredible heavy goods to the side, that also does quite impact uh, to the, uh, you know, transport, uh, CO2, et cetera, et cetera. So, right with structure with uh, uh, Chimba uh, Foundation is quite beneficial, we think. And this is the last my slide, uh, kind of, this is part three lecture slide, but kind of this is you know how we are kind of like between us. It's kind of like a glue you know, of a, a sort of a, a shame sheet parts that I know we are stick together. We cannot separate. You know me and Patrick and Brian. Then we understand each other, and then uh, I know our uh, the client wants to have a body for money, and then uh, also architect want to uh, provide a sort of a uh, quality and a special design, and the contractor wants to say. Uh, money, uh, uh, yeah, uh, you know, save time and uh, more uh, profit. Sort of this is so ambition is kind of like uh, at the moment holding us together with uh, uh, the way we deliver the job. So, okay, this is the last one. So I pass to casting and uh, thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Tao. That was great. Um, first of all, thank you for having me and inviting me to participate in this. I hope you can see my screen coming up. Um, after Tower's really next course in the architecture of it and the the uh, <clears throat> the um, design of and the use of CNC, I just thought I'd give an next course into the uh, wood that was used, a Koya uh, Tower touched on it. And um, I just thought 
maybe some of you might not have heard of Akoya. Certainly when I came to the project, um, I didn't know what Akoya was, to be honest. And Tao gave me um, uh, some information material. We found loads of help by the company that sells Akoya and obviously on Trada, who has done quite a lot of testing with Akoya. So for us, it was a very steep learning curve from day one to get up to speed um, what to do with Akoya. So I obviously cannot pack everything in my presentation, but I think I'll touch on it and give you a very quick um, overview. Um, hopefully this works now. Right. So what is Akoya um, wood? Um, is it a tree? Well, it comes from trees and it starts off as a standard pine tree uh, in uh, managed forests. Um, as we all know, pine trees grow very fast and are a softwood. Um, so therefore, actually, normally not as good in uh, resisting um, the environment and need to be treated in all forms uh, to resist insects and decay. And how is a koya made? These pine trees get, get normally processed into, into wooden um, elements like beams and uh, uh, joists. And I will give you some more information in a minute um, what sort of size are available. But uh, so once they, once they are um, sawn as normal uh, construction timber is, you would, uh, you would then start a special process, which is um, sort of a drying of the timber, as I understand it in the first instance, to get um, to dry down the water and then replace those, uh, those water, uh, those hydrocycles with um, acetic an anhydrides, um, which is basically a, a sort of a vinegar uh, that takes the place of the water and won't allow water back into those places, uh, which then is really not liked by the insects and um, any sort of fungi that would normally decay the wood. Um, and the brilliant thing about this is that the, uh, um, the compound that is used is very, very similar to what is, what is used in the, in the wood, what the wood has naturally as a content in there. So it's, it's not that we're putting a lot of chemicals in there as such. Uh, we're basically using the same um, acidity, acidity that is in the wood already, just increasing it and, and making it um, sort of more durable uh, with that. Um, unfortunately, that process doesn't really harden the wood. If anything, it might even, it might sort of get graded a little bit lower. I haven't gone into the grading of it, but uh, I just wanted to um, show you sort of the standard dimension and grades that are available. Um, the A1 and A2 are, are similar to uh, C22 and C16. Um, so we, we're getting almost to a structural C24 that we used to uh, work with. And that's sort of the grade that we used on, on the project. And we're getting quite a range of sizes from 100 to 200 mil in depth and from 25 to 100 mil in width, which is sort of what we normally get um, for our construction timber. And the length are very similar to the construction timber as well, because it comes from the pine wood and is sort of the first sort of step of its life is very similar to con the normal construction softwood timber. So it comes in 2.4, 3 meters, 3.6, 4.2 and uh, 4.8 meters. So it's, it's, it's really quite therefore versatile and can be used in the same way that normal construction timber is with the added uh, obviously benefit of uh, not needing to be treated as much and uh, has with having a lot um, better life expectancy. The bit to look out for here is because of the acidity of um, a koya, it's almost treated like um, some of our acidic hardwoods that will need definitely um, stainless steel fastener and there's guidance and what, what grades to use. And, and that's one thing to look out for and to make sure that these fasteners don't uh, corrode within the wood. That's the, the key learning really that we got from, um, from this project. Um, other than that, um, the challenges for us obviously were when we started to look at this with, uh, with Tower, he said, oh, I want to do this all in timber. But we all, from the start, we compared it with, um, with the uh, traditional build. Um, that's where Tower got his, uh, his number for the carbon footprint. Um, as Tower mentioned in the beginning, we have the, uh, 
oak trees nearby and we have London clay on site. And if, if structure engineers are listening in, you know that that's a very terrible combination in London. Um, therefore, you would have had to um, dig uh, foundations probably way in excess of 1.5 meters, 2.5 maybe even, in this sort of vicinity of the trees. And therefore, it's it would have not been suitable as a foundation solution. So screw piles um, should have always been considered in this instance, especially on the size of the project, uh, screw piles are very economic. We started off with sketches that are indicated in there to give the tolerance on top of the screw piles, um, which working with timber, the joiners work to millimeters tolerance and then the pilers <laughs> work to 50 to 75 millimeters uh, tolerance, which is um, which is a lot uh, different. And therefore we had to come up with um, sort of slotted hole arrangement. So there was a there was a base plate to the pile hat with slotted holes in one direction and the base plate that is the finger, uh, the, the, the fixing plate for the timber that had slotted holes in the other direction. So we, we ended up having 50 mil movement within our arrangement, but you all know that's probably only giving us sort of 25 to 30 mil tolerance. But I have to say the, the pilots were very good. Um, and, and, you know, as you see, we managed to that sort of tolerance. Um, and the other thing uh, that I want to say here is um, we started off with thinking we can do it in two standard connections and designed two standard connection, ended up with four, but kind of um, have managed to keep the number of different um, elements that we're using to assemble to a minimum, just to give, um, just to provide less confusion on site when this uh, complex project goes up. The cassette walls, as Tower mentioned, um, I sort of stole an image from Tower, as you saw before. Um, in principle, the, the, the posts and the studs from Akoya go up. Uh, Tower showed a picture with the, with the side team assembling those, um, those Akoya studs initially, and then uh, the full cassettes um, sort of go in, uh, although the, the sort of one side of the cassette is, is kept off and uh, then they get tied together and then the um the internal side gets um, gets finished um on site that's sort of how we um worked out the walls and the very interesting bit and uh, what tower said there was no flitch beam there was no steel um we have basically created composite timber beams with plywood a uh, big learning curve as well um the deflection values and everything that we uh, calculated were actually still obviously higher than what we achieved on site. So when when we go through, we were a bit conservative on this. The way we we um, accommodated this, as Tower mentioned, uh, we have actually one primary element uh, you kind of see spanning side to side, which was the the fin of the uh, waffle slab, the, the 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 sort of center fin of the waffle slab. Uh, in there, we started off gluing the the um, fearings on top, and then in um, working together with Tao, we said, actually, this is not this is not going to uh, be a very robust way of doing it. So we ended up having the center fin um, sort of um, extending, and the way it was it was produced is that the 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 waffles or the the the, the elements of the ceiling were were introduced as sort of these red part, and then again strengthened with glue and glued and screwed on side. So that we had a, a, a very uh, thick section, pretty much thicker than your, your normal 50 by uh, 200 or 250. We even went, I think we had 200 up to the roof and then, yeah, 100. So it was 300 by, oh, sorry, 300 by um, almost 60 wide section, which structurally for a sort of fairly small extension like this was very sufficient. And um, that's sort of the end of my, Excores into the structural um, bits. I um, hope there's a few structural engineers here having some questions. I didn't want to go into too much detail, uh, just in case the architects fall off the chairs. <laughs> uh, but yeah, feel free to ask questions in the Q and A section. Thanks, um, Kirsten. No, the details are always great. And can I yeah ask three of you to um, turn on your unmute yourselves. 
and um, Patrick, I'd like to yeah um, welcome you as a, a contractor to your very first webinar, I understand. Yes, that's my yes. first webinar. So thank you very much for, for inviting me and a big thank you to Taro for encouraging me to join. Yeah. Um, so how have you found, is this sort of different to working, you know, like you would normally work? Is this like the first time you've had a relationship as close as this and worked like as a three-way team? Uh, basically, that was our another job with, with Taro. I think a third one, uh, from from what I remember. So we learn a little bit uh, how to um, organize a site, how to do this kind of development uh, using uh, not standard procedures to 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 do it. So uh, on this third one, uh, I think we, we managed quite well to, um, to work with the team. And I think we, we've done a very nice project. And um, yeah, so uh, I would be more than happy to answer some more questions uh, mm -hmm. about some, some details, if I remember them. Mm -hmm. So are you used? to using timber as a construction company or is this you're quite new to it as well i don't know we we use uh, quite a lot of uh, timber uh, but standard timber but uh, on this project we, we use quite a lot of akoya and has you ever previously worked with akoya sorry to work with had you previously worked with akoya as a timber no, this is for the first time with Taro, and uh, so we start actually liking it, this material because it's really robust, good materials to use on the construction site, and it's uh, you know easy to work with. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, find that fantastic. There's there's quite a lot of sort of questions coming in, so we think we can use them to sort of direct sort of our conversation. So obviously there's um, the change from the um, traditional masonry, which is what you'd you know um, you thought you were going to go down, um, and you you not looked at the whole um, carbon calculator. But somebody was asking about the costs. How did you know? Have you got any indication of how? by moving from the traditional to, to this form that it, it changed the costs. And I think that would be to you, Patrick or Taro. Uh, I think uh, I can try to answer this question. Uh, it's very difficult to, to actually uh, say about the cost difference because uh, to, to, to have a, a great answer, we would have to build something similar uh, out in the traditional way, then we could compare it. But uh, what we noticed definitely that uh, the process of organizing uh, the, the, this contract took a little bit longer, but uh, actually work on site took uh, definitely less time. And uh, you know, once you learn with the first pieces how to put them together, then it's like a domino, yeah? And uh, basically, it was quite a fast process then. So uh, I, if I could say in general, I think we saved around between 20 to 30 percent of time uh, comparing to the traditional way if we mm -hmm. did it that way. And that's a significant cost saving and, and time saving for everybody. Yeah, time definitely because you know when when Taro presented the total weight is uh, mm -hmm. is minimum comparing to the weight uh, mm -hmm. if that job would be, if that uh, structure would be done in the traditional mm -hmm. way, mm -hmm. so definitely was a lot of savings on on transport, mm -hmm. on uh, bringing materials in and uh, mm -hmm. take out. Mm -hmm. So again. Uh, just kind of guessing, I would say uh, the, the the cost of the um, uh, if that uh, structure done in the traditional way, I would say it would be around forty percent more expensive than than we mm -hmm. did it this way. Um, thank you. Um, a quick question was like how um, so how long were you on site? Was it was it a straightforward well, like arrive in January, leave in? 
Not really, because there are always complications on site. So I haven't been on this any on, on a site where there was no problems. But uh, this one practically was quite smooth process uh, of doing this. Uh, we were also um, uh, improving the the main house as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so in uh, in total, I, from what I remember, we've been like around six to seven months. Yeah, oh, brilliant. I'm assuming the family weren't living there at the time. <laughs> no, 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 they, they moved away. <laughs> I know. I, and, and I'd just like to make a comment. I mean, you had a um, like a, a steel roof over the over the building. Um, so you, you, you put an umbrella up while you were building? Yeah, yeah, we, we put it temporarily hard because it's absolutely necessary, especially when, when you work pretty much with only team buyer. So you, 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 you want to make sure that everything is dry on site. Such a good answer, Patrick. You you yeah. you you you've learned that timber so so quickly. Um, right. So what have we got here? So th there's so many different questions coming in. So I'm just going to go pick a few of them. So off-site manufacture. I mean, it's really fascinating seeing how Tara you sort of developed the whole system, the color coding, the whole CNC thing, um, and the whole off-site manufacture. Um, do you think it's possible to scale up? I think it's a question for all of you. You know, could you actually build a whole sort of terrace like this? Yes, uh, yeah, we, we want to make it more bigger and then, uh, you know, next one kind of like manage story, et cetera, et cetera. But this is actually, uh, it's not, uh, you know, unusual thing uh, using a computer and then, uh, uh, you know, sort of making a, a fabrication component out of a computer. So like uh, originally kind of I did a bit of research, but as somebody who done a uh, long time ago was like Frank Gehry did a 25, 30 years ago for this Bilbao project. Bilbao project was quite a complex shape. So uh, if you give that drawing to contractor, contractor, we don't know what to do. So he actually invented, well, it's Gehry technology invented the software with, I think it's a Katia uh, from like a French airplane. Yeah to sort of, you know, you know, with a coder and the architect together. And, and, and it's now it's, I think once, I think what's called the digital project, sort of, a, you know, basically kind of is a parametric system that if Gary curve, make a curve, kind of like that follows kind of work out, you know, how that, you know, bolt, you know, facilitated kind of steel beam, you know, and then made it. Mm -hmm. And then that's become already a 3D data and then a contractor that can price it and make it. So, Actually, these things has been already done, and then uh, we're doing this. So you know, uh, you know, architects kind mm -hmm. of. So you know, they also draw. They had a, a, another kind of drawing fabrication team uh, in the Gaty, the office, mm -hmm. and they apparently did everything. Uh, when mm -hmm. they did a, a bit about it was quite experimental, and actually, mm -hmm. I could speak somebody who uh, founded the Gaty technology, and he says so too. So probably mm -hmm. too. And then they also had a kind of quite a complex sort of, a, but a new sort of friendly contract arrangement that are, what's going to happen the liability, et cetera, et cetera, delay. So there has been, uh, so it's it's possible, but you know, just uh, with small practice. So, and also wood has been really a very great role because if mm -hmm. steel and glass, one's going to, you know, it's very difficult mm -hmm. to fix, but wood, you just cut, chop, fill, anything. So. That's suited to small practice or, or mm -hmm. a small contractor we're working. Uh, so, uh, you know, any cook up, you know, we can kind of fix it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like that any mistakes can easily be fixed, you know, as long as you've got a piece of sandpaper, a saw, or a drill. Yeah, yeah, or a, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or a CNC firm just around yeah. the corner. Um, so, I'm just asking about the uh, insulation. So, what was the in insulation? And did you also like um, any, put any membranes in there? So yeah, we have, we have to put uh, uh, paper, paper seeds and then uh, mm. uh, sort of rigid insulation. And actually, uh, uh, we have a kind of gap between the uh, joinery and then uh, uh, this mm. cassette that we, we put another one. So internally also, we, we put the insulation uh, as well. So uh, mm. it's, but actually it's a sort of hard one. Yeah, so okay. it's, uh, yeah, rigid. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and it's that, so that's the round the outside of the cassettes or actually in yeah. the cassettes as well. Inside the cassette, and then also mm -hmm. uh, you know outside and the then room the, side, yeah. Yeah. Also, cassette is made of a uh, uh, room side of facing the fifty mm so two layer of plywood, which is already fifty mm solid. Mm -hmm. It's quite uh, uh, robust and yeah. uh, uh, summary. Yeah. It's uh, uh, quite uh, you know reasonable. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, a quick one on the CNC machining. You know, they say you've got very square internal corners, um, yes. you know, no radii. So was it just a very, very small bit or? or, or no, no, we already radii? make a joint, a so-called fillet. So uh -huh. we make a, a kind of a round the corner and then uh, uh, this mm. CNC guy make another hole. So mm. it's called a fillet. So if you look close, you can see this fillet, you know, uh, yeah. joint. Yeah. So, so, so what we do is really basic, you know, joint or the box, box joint. Mm -hmm. So it's a main thing is that we get, you know, conventional carpenter mm -hmm. who use Makita too. Uh, and then they can do glue and screw, uh, you know, anybody can pick it up. So yeah. that's the main thing. We kind of like uh, yeah. straight into our technology, yeah. well, our technology, mm -hmm. our uh, sort of system into mm -hmm. uh, UK domestic mm -hmm. building side. Mm -hmm. So I think somebody thinks there's, um, ah, a plywood on the outside, but I think it's a coir, a coir cladding. Yeah, a coir, yeah, yeah, yeah. And is it? It's a. It's a very dark stain, or is it? Is it a different yes, kind of yeah. Thing? We, we, we. I think Tecnos company called Tecnos. We do. We use a kind of recommended uh, uh, mm. stain, which is dark. So next time we're going to a little bit experiment. It was a bit of a, and we use another material for the other job, which worked mm -hmm. for my point mm -hmm. of view aesthetically yeah. worked a bit better. So uh, yeah. sorry for the Tecnos, but. <laughs> 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 no. And also, we are not uh, paid by Akoya. We're talking about a lot of things, Apo, Akoya, mm. but we've got nothing yeah. to do with Akoya. <laughs> yeah, so there's all the different plywoods in yeah, there yeah. and all those other, other timbers in there. But yeah, that yeah. was the, 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 new, the, the new type of timber that was you know, yeah, new because to, it's, uh, to, you know, to you all. Yeah, because it's quite unique. Yeah. You know, we use a yeah. foundation and we use yeah. a roof coping mm. and a window. Yeah. And we, yeah, yeah. Can use, we can make a door. Yeah. It's a whole yeah. thing in you know, one, one, yeah. Yeah, one material, which yeah. is quite yeah. amazing. Yeah. So I don't know if this is a question for you, Carsten, and obviously Patrick as well. It's so for the four meter open into the existing property. Um, is that still beam? Is that? So the, the opening in the masonry wall is a steel beam, but the opening in the in the wooden extension isn't. That's a composite plywood. But it's it's taller there because we have an upstand for the roof lights. So uh, it, it does actually work really well. So it was all sort of um, hidden and um, mm -hmm. not hidden. It's, it's actually the, the, the working with the wood is actually quite honest because you, you, you do show everything. Mm -hmm. um, but we didn't need any steel in, in the wooden annex. Mm -hmm. And people are commenting on how clean and you know, obviously how tidy it looks. So, Patrick, that's obviously down to your site management or your site manager. But it, so, is there any coatings on the inside of the, um, the plywood and the things? And how did you keep everything so clean and tidy? I think we, we have a very good team and uh, our site manager, Marek, uh, he did a great job uh, uh, to achieve this kind of details. You have to keep uh, the site clean on a daily basis uh, because you, you work with uh, quite precise dimensions and uh, so good aesthetic uh, on site is achieved. Uh, uh, the way that we that we clean the site on daily basis, and um, we try to keep all materials segregated so they not messed up with with other stuff. <laughs> Uh, no, I, I, I like it. It's nothing like a clean and tidy site. Um, so I don't know who picked one. So the ring beam, I think, is quite close to the floor. How do you, you know, is it going to get continuously wet? I mean, um, is it actually raised above ground level or what's the... Um, Yes, it's raised from ground level, but then mm. if it's even inside of water, doesn't matter. Mm. That's that's the incredible thing about this uh, product, and and as you can see, that bridge, it can be mm. water out of water. Mm. Yeah, so uh, that's 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 the reason why. And I think uh, uh, I saw one uh, mm. coke house. I think one a river or sometime they used. Uh, I saw our uh, this guy doing the same thing. So yeah, so I would think. Yeah. you know people start using more because you're just uh, you know uh, mm -hmm. electing or, or preparing this foundation if mm -hmm. you think about the trench mm -hmm. and then the field and then, and then uh, you know filling with the, uh, the concrete just takes so long and then you have to wait the concrete to cure but then uh, mm -hmm. screw pile, screw pile, put timber uh, aquaria mm -hmm. foundation down that's incredible so uh, there is a lot of advantages it's uh, yeah. aqua itself is expensive, but uh, if you think about, you know, if you can set up a foundation, you know, mm. in a couple of days, mm. well, it took some time to dig the uh, pipe, but it's not that, not that bad. Maybe we spent three, four days and mm -hmm. then a uh, could do, you know, or, uh, you know, mm. 
Mm. Big beam, uh, grand beam, like in the probably I don't know, a couple of days. I think it was something like that. It wasn't really like you know, you know we were watching this in foundation, mm. you know, it wasn't mm. like that. Yeah. Mm. Um, a quick air tightness. Did did you do any air tightness testing on it? You're on mute. Sorry. Sorry. Well, well, no, we we haven't done uh, air tightness okay. uh, because yeah. it's quite a large opening to the mm. existing house. And then, mm. uh, because it's in house uh, external fabric, we didn't mm. know very much. No. So, uh, uh, yeah, we didn't uh, uh, try it. Do that, yes. My my headphones are playing up. Sorry. Um, what's the method? What's the form of heating in the building? Underfloor heating. Yeah. Oh, it's underfloor heating. Yeah. Oh, in which case, that would be really interesting to see, like the the, the floor build up. So you've got the Akoya ring beam, and yeah. then what's the floor build up above that? But I'll be, uh, we have a joist, and then a, a chimba decking, and a mm. quite a, I don't know how many layer we did. A proper at least like two layers of eighty milli, and then a, a sort of letter of heat, you know, a sort of a panel that are, you can put uh, uh, hot water sort of a tubes. And that's mm -hmm. kind of coming at 50 milli. And then uh, mm -hmm. we put the engineer board. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. we, so we do it quite often this, uh, uh, mm -hmm. and we did it for upstairs mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So we use this uh, sort of letter of it style uh, under fry heating with mm -hmm. uh, private, you know, private decking in between mm -hmm. this panel and then uh, finish with the uh, engineer mm -hmm. board. And is that a wet system or wet a? System, yes. It's a wet system. Yes. Yeah, no, that's it. So you, uh, the pipe is about ten millimeter with wet system, and then a panel comes with fifteen millimeter. Yeah. So uh, sorry, Kirsten, there's not so many questions from from en en engineers. Um, I just a quick question from all of you: Would you would you recommend the system? Would you do it again? Or uh, yeah, we've been we were we were actually uh, getting a lot of questions from architects, and uh, let us know you are. Uh, specialist uh, uh, mm -hmm. joinery company, specialist uh, grading installer, specialist. I cannot answer these questions because mm -hmm. we don't have them. <laughs> you know, yeah. kind of we are the one. And then uh, if you think, you know, oh, we have to get this number from this guy, then uh, maybe not so for you. But mm -hmm. if you think this, if you see this uh, video, or I, I gave uh, another talk, mm -hmm. uh, similar one, and I think, oh, that's how we do it. I can do that then maybe for you uh sort of a we're not doing something anything you know difficult it mm -hmm. might looks like taking a lot of time but it's actually we save a lot of time while we're doing and mm -hmm. fairly stress-free during construction stage you know we don't have much mm -hmm. you know shouting much we just kind mm -hmm. of work together and then uh, uh we, thank, uh, thank you very, thank you yeah. mm -hmm. thank you taro i know yeah. we're, we're running close to time yeah, any yeah. final final words custom um yeah, for us it was interesting because it is very, very detailed compared to sort of the normal, the normal annex, which we probably didn't didn't anticipate, but it was fun working with. And Patrick. Yeah, same like uh, Carlson said. Uh, project was very interesting, uh, uh, different than than the standard one. So sometimes it's good to to have project like this instead of you know repeating same thing again and again and again. Yeah. Oh, wow. so, um, yeah, it was very nice. Ah, I'm I'm pressing the wrong button. <laughs> No, that absolutely brilliant here. And so really thank you for giving up you know, an hour to come and talk to us. So Taro, Kirsten and Patrick, people obviously know, know where to find you. This is being recorded and it will go up on our video um, channel, Timber Development UK channel tomorrow. Um, so yeah, no, thank you. Thank you so much for taking your time. And we look forward to more of your entries uh, in, in the Wood Awards to see you know what 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 you've been up to. So although here the Wood Awards says it closes on the 1st of July, it's been extended and it is now closes on the 15th of July. So if you've got anything uh, you know at all, whether it's furniture or it's small buildings or retrofit or extensions or new builds, you know you've got time to get your entries in. Um, We'd like to invite you to come and join us on the 14th of September. So we've got a break during August when we come back to hear all about um, the built East Pavilion, which I think is over the water. Um, so you can sign up free now via Eventbrite. And with that, I'd just like to say thank you all, gentlemen.
and have a good afternoon.